Our next presentation um, is on quantitative assessment of soil structure interaction. And uh, the PI is Dr. Elna Seilabi, uh, but uh, Dr. Seilabi couldn't be present to, uh, to go through the project. Dr. Mustafa um, um, did a big favor to us, uh, agreed to uh, present the uh, the project on behalf of Dr. Seilabi and Dr. Mustafa. Right. Thanks again, Dr. Mustafa. And I'm so sorry, you know, like if you will have too much of me today, like, uh, but I promise this is the <laughs> last time I will present today. So no, uh, we never have too much of you, Dr. Mustafa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So yeah, so Dr. Shalev, you know, like had to excuse herself today. She has actually like uh, two events that she's participating in today and she couldn't be uh, available to present. But um, she has been working on this project, you know, like with her student and I'm occasionally helping just from the bridge side. But the focus here is on trying to uh, quantify, you know, like the effect of the soil structural interaction at the future, you know, like design of, uh, of bridges. So the overall motivation for this project, you know, like is that to accelerate rapid bridge construction in seismic areas specifically. So SSI, I have to be clear from the beginning, SSI is really a seismic issue. It's not, you know, like uh, uh, something that you will just consider under like service loads. It's mostly for earthquake engineering and how the structure and the soil play together and how they exchange displacements and forces. So it's more relevant for seismic. And since ABC is not as common in seismic areas uh, yet as in the other parts of the country, for example. So if we were to help, you know, like people in the West Coast in California, for example, to buy into the ABC, maybe having a, a good understanding of things like SSI effects would even encourage them more. So we wanted to understand or like um, the objective of this project is to better understand the effect of the foundation flexibility. How does it, you know, like massage the, uh, the input? If you do the offline analysis, assuming there is no soil, as we typically do, there will be this much seismic demands on your columns or in your connection. But if you were to account for the soil in a, you know, like a proper or informed way, maybe the demands will be uh, significantly less. And that's what I will show towards the uh, end from what uh, Dr. Selvi has been finding with her student on this. So, you know, like they wanted to also use uh, different like um, ways of um, uh, studying the SSI. So not all the work that I will um, show or that uh, Dr. You know, like Shalabi prepared is um, all what they have done. They have went through a lot of work, you know, like to um, try different SSI methods, to try different um, soil domain modeling and things like that. And then we, um, the one that they are presenting is the one that is uh, more likely to be implemented, the easiest one. So this project is an exploratory project in a sense that again, you know, like this is not even done for conventional bridges yet. So hopefully whatever they are getting from this project can help both the conventional bridges and as well as the ABC uh, community. So if we look at the literature, what people have done, you know, like historically, they, if you were to account for the structure and the soil, one way is to have the entire thing modeled in one platform. And this is some of uh, Dr. Shelby's work, you know, like um, during a PhD or so. And, you know, like, or you can even have some equivalent way. You can have multi frame or multi platform, like uh, uh, models, like let's say a bridge model in OpenSeas, a uh, geotech model in maybe a different uh, software and get them to talk offline. So, what they implemented in this project is similar to the uh, multi actually platform thing, as uh, we will explain uh, later, but in an online way, not in an offline way. And again, I will talk about this a little bit briefly when we get to it. So, the overall goal of this project is to investigate how the soil structure interaction, you know, like uh, uh, affect the seismic demands. And we are specific here on the forces and displacement that would later on affect a uh, design of an ABC connection, for example, or a conventional uh, bridge. So the objectives, the specific objectives to accomplish this goal is to start by calibrating a simplified nonlinear numerical model that can capture you know, global behavior of an ABC model. So here at UNR, like Dr. Saidi in five years ago, so tested like a full ABC system and it was part of the ABC ETC, you know, like a, a project. And we have this model. So if we were find a way to generate even if, uh, if it's a simplified or an emulative model, you know, like that can capture the behavior of this, we can then scale it up, this bridge, and use it at the prototype scale so that we can couple it with soil and start, you know, like uh, investigating the quantitative, you know, like effects of the, uh, um, uh, the, the seismic performance, basically, of the prototype bridge with and without the uh, soil. So the research tasks that they um, are looking at as part of this project is a baseline finite element modeling and calibration for the tested ABC system here, 
That was the first step. Then we scaled it up for the prototype and start looking into the direct modeling of the SSI effects in the second task. The third task was to do a comparative analysis with and without the soil and see what would be the SSI effects on the seismic demand. And hopefully the last task, which will be happening in May, I guess, according to the timeline, uh, is the um, final report and the results the same initially. So the first task is the simplified finite element modeling and calibration. And as I mentioned, this leveraged a recent ABC ETC project, which Dr. Saidi did like uh, in the past. And this was like the shake table studies of a bridge system with ABC connection. So if you are interested to go and look back at the uh, bridge that they are using, that is the one here. And it is, you know, like a, a decent scale. So it's a 35% scale. And it was like a two span steel girder bridge with six different ABC connections. So now let me be clear, you know, the model did not account for any ABC specific, you know, like connections, but what we wanted to show here or what, and this is where my role, you know, like come in the play in this project is to just model our bridge the way, the same way we will model like an emulative or a cast in place type of bridge and see if the ABC, you know, like connection is well already or is well behaving and behave as the same way as then a, uh, in an emulative way or as in the cast in place construction type of connection, then you don't really need to do anything specific to the model for the ABC because you will be able to capture the behavior still. So it will be all about the demands itself that you will use it for, you know, like if you back engineer the problem, we do the model first before we do the construction. So we want to do the model so that we know what are the seismic demands that we will use to finalize the design of the ABC connection in terms of the development links in terms of the shear force that you use in terms of you know like whatever values you are using for the design based on the connection type so this bridge was tested up to failure and it provides a lot of valuable experimental data that you know like um Inez was her student were able to you know like um, practice different types of models and again i'm showing here the most simplified version that they decided to proceed with so that's you know like a superstructure wireframe of the bridge in open seas the, in the most simplified way but the material models and the boundary conditions and things like that has been calibrated or have been calibrated in a very careful way so that this is the experimental behavior that you see here i mean that's the analytical behavior the backbone curves that you know like uh, represent the analytical behavior and this is how it compares to the experimental results so not only that the model was able to capture the force you know like uh, capacity in a, a decent way, but it also very accurately captured, you know, like displacement capacities as well within five to 10%, you know, like differences. So they considered that this model is acceptable from the modeling, you know, like tricks and tweaks that they did. And this provided the confidence for them to scale this up. So in the second task to directly model the SSI effects, they first did a prototype bridge. Now the prototype bridge is a larger version, of course, a real scale one. So that is the prototype bridge, you know, like that uh, uh, they chose and they implemented same modeling techniques that they have done in the, you know, like a, a reduced scale one. For the superstructure, since it is, you know, like the model using a simplified single element or so, they used, I think, Seaside Bridge or SAP or some of these software to do some equivalent cross sections and, uh, and things like that. And then when it comes to the soil, and this is where, you know, like Dr. Like Shalabi's expertise is all in this uh, you know, like area. She is expert in one of the few experts in this area, I would say, because she has practiced so many different methods and she has developed her own software. So that's a software that, you know, like Dr. Shelby has developed uh, uh, with her advisor at Caltech when she was at Caltech. And it's a very like neat um, software that can do both soil modeling very with full capabilities as well as structural modeling as well. So far, their software is good for soil. So we still needed to use Open Seas for the, you know, like um, uh, for the bridge. But Open Seas is good for the bridge, but it's not good for the soil. You know, like the uh, Seismo V Lab is good for the soil and it's not ready yet for the uh, bridge. So they had to mix and match the uh, the two of them. And again, I don't know most of the details, so I'm trying to give like an overview here or a big picture. But uh, my understanding is that. There are different ways of modeling for the soil domain. And I think they decided to go with the domain reduction method or the DRM. That's the method that they have decided to use um, for capturing the SSI effect. This is the soil domain. You know, like if you were to have the soil by itself and they usually propagate some soil waves through the soil to um, calibrate the model and you know, just kick off things before they go to the uh, seismic and the earthquake simulation. So in the third, you know, like uh, um, uh, task, 
they actually did what they did. Okay, so maybe I um, I don't have a slide for for this, but I can go back one slide. So what you would have here, you would have the soil only, and what you would have, you will have the uh, bridge model in the open seas only. So what they um, would do, they would put you know like a bridge model here in the soil and at the nodes where it connects with the soil they will be basically replaying the effect you know like or replaying the displacement histories let's say that you would get from the open seas and in the meantime in parallel they are propagating the seismic wave through the, the, the soil domain so that you know like you are replaying a soil and a bridge analysis together so that again and that's the domain reduction method that i don't know the details for but this is how you capture the uh, live or the online SSI effects. But what once they, um, they are done with the analysis, they took actually the output at the points where the bridge will be connected to the soil domain, let's say at the two abutments, and maybe at the foundation at the pier. And they will provide this as a prescribed displacement history in open seas for the bridge model with no soil. But you know, like now the prescribed displacement history that they are inputting is a real SSI, you know, like sensitive input as opposed to an offline generated seismic. So when they do the offline generated seismic ground motion versus the online, you know, like SSI, they were able to compare the behavior of the bridge with, you know, like the bridge only or the bridge with the soil. So what you see here in red is the um, nonlinear response under the Northridge earthquake at the two columns of the pier, it's a two column, you know, like uh, a pier. So you can see here that the blue response is the, uh, when you account for the soil. So overall you get, you know, like much lower forces, although the displacements are pretty much the same, but you get lower forces because the soil now, when you properly account for this, it somehow filters some of the forces or, you know, like the interaction between the soil and the structure capture part of the force as well. And the, uh, um, you know, like longitudinal direction, the displacements as well were like significantly reduced, not only the forces, but the displacement was significantly reduced as well. These are sample of the time histories that they are getting, but here, here the colors are flipped, I'm sorry. So uh, for inconvenience, uh, sorry for the inconvenience here, here red is the bridge only. Now the red is the bridge plus soil. So the colors are flipped. But if you look at uh, now the right hand side, this is the one, the red was the soil now is that you see much smaller demands. So this is how the seismic response will change if you properly account for the soil. So what they did, and to conclude this project, they wanted to look at the shear forces at the column interface, since this will be one of the key factors to use for the structural design of the bridge elements or the ABC connections specifically. And this is, you know, this slide again, took like literally one year of uh, trials until they were able to demonstrate this comparative case. So if you do the bridge only and the bridge plus soil, you will see how much change you are getting in your seismic demands here. And if you look, you know, like through the numbers in the longitudinal like, um, direction, usually you get a much reduction in the forces, 30%, 50%, you know, like, and this, they did some like uh, um, linear and linear cases. They looked at the column uh, cab beam interface and the column, you know, like footing interface for the two columns of the pier. So you will see on average that you know, like the soil in indicating or in including the soil can significantly reduce your demands. And I don't, to the best of my knowledge, and according to Dr. Shalib again, this has never been documented in such an, uh, you know, like comprehensive way before. And again, we are not going to go anywhere close to an ABC guide for this project, unlike the one that I presented like 20 minutes ago, but because of the nature of the project, but at least because of this exploratory study, they are able to provide some meaningful conclusions here. So there's, in general, the simplified nonlinear wireframe open seas model, you know, like proof to capture the bridge response with sufficient accuracy, as I've sh uh, shown in one of the slides. This gave them the confidence to scale things up at the prototype and to estimate it, you know, like, or to basically claim or argue that what this way of modeling can uh, be appropriate for modeling ABC bridges. That's an independent from the SSI effect. It's a conclusion by itself. Then the comparative analysis that they did showed that the shear force in the column can be reduced if you were to account for the soil case. So the bridge plus the soil case due to the presence of the soil and the effect of the soil is taken, as I said, at the abutments and the footing under the column. So this reduction, of the shear force applied at the interface suggests actually that if you don't account for your um, soil, you are unnecessarily conservative or you are unnecessarily designing, you know, like some of the connections for a much higher demand or force than what had been needed. So this can lead to a whole future, you know, like a, um, economic way of designing seismic connection. So overall, the seismic demands was proven at both column to footing and column to cap beam connection to be 
uh, decreased when you consider the soil profile. And what they are concluding with this is for future work to consider a wider range of bridges and soil prof profiles and configuration. And another project would hopefully develop the design guidance. So again, the design guidance is not part of the scope of this project. This was only scratching the surface, but uh, hopefully a future design, I mean, a future project can pick it up from here and, you know, like uh, uh, extend it to different parameters, different configurations and codify, in a sense, the SSI effects. So I think that's what we had to share and this concludes the presentation. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa. Um, I mean, you make uh, every presentation uh, <laughs> a great presentation really you, no matter how how much you know about the project which of course you knew uh, plenty about this one um thank thank you again um one question comes to mind dr mustafa um we saw that you described how the um, bridge model was kind of validated using the test that Dr. Saidi did. Uh, do we have something similar to validate the modeling of the soil? Uh, that's, you know, like a, an excellent question. And I think, you know, like Inez has, yes, but as part of the Seismo, you know, like a, a VLAB software that they are doing, I think there are there were like a lot of case studies that they did just to verify the soil modeling. So maybe this was not presented here or not part of the project, but I can make sure to pass this comment to her to see also if this would be very of value to add it to the report or to at least to refer the uh, future readers of the report to some validation work on the soil modeling as well. I'm sure that she did because she told me that she has done a lot of work on the soil validation, but it's not presented as part of this project to my knowledge. But maybe this comment is well taken and I can uh, pass it to her. Sure, thank you very much. And um, we saw that uh, almost in, actually in all cases, longitudinal forces uh, drop significantly. Do you think just, just again, some, some engineering deduction, no luck, like, do you think there will be a case that uh, it work opposite, like soil uh, structure interaction will increase the uh, well, force? I think you know, this goes not to the soil effect, but rather to the simplification that we do when we model the bridge itself at the abutment. I think that one of the most common ways of modeling the abutments is just using roller supports. When you talk to Caltrans or some of the people in the seismic world, you know that the roller support at the abutment would be, you know, like more on the conservative side. So maybe it's not the soil that really, you know, like reduces the um, demand that much. It's just if we were from the beginning to model the bridge, you know, like uh, in a proper way, with the proper boundary condition, we would have, let's say, um, you know, like some demand. This demand will be still, you know, like uh, reduced further, according to my understanding, when you properly model the soil. But at least if you have some sort of a, a boundary condition at the abutments, maybe some springs that are calibrated somehow to mimic some soil interaction, even if it's minimal, this would lead to uh, uh, a more, you know, like uh, close results, if you will, like in the transverse case. But I think this is mostly the big differences that we saw. That's my view from a structural engineering perspective, is that when we model bridges only, we don't even care about springs at the abutments in many of the cases, and we put roller support, we know that this will be on the conservative side. And we know that this will overestimate the response in the longitudinal direction, yet we choose to do this just to be on the conservative side. So uh, maybe this is one of the reasons for the big differences we have seen. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa.